In the late 2000s, the landscape of this glorious website we find ourselves on looked quite different than it does today. There were a handful of popular creators who could be considered the first big YouTubers, but other than that, it was mostly random people posting whatever just for fun. Aspiring singers would often upload videos of themselves covering popular songs to share with friends and family, but I don't think any of them expected that they could launch a whole singing career just from posting on YouTube. All that changed with the rise of one particular pop star who was born from the internet. I'm sure you all know who I'm referring to. It's Justin Bieber, obviously. By now, I think most of us are more or less familiar with Justin Bieber's history. He grew up in a small town in Ontario, Canada, raised by a single mom. He was interested in music from a young age, and in 2007, at age 12, he entered a local singing competition, performing the song So Sick by Neo. His mom posted a video of the performance on YouTube to share with their friends and family, but it soon reached beyond their personal circle. Justin started posting more videos of himself singing and playing the guitar to his YouTube channel, Kid Rawl. At least I think that's how you say that. Scooter Braun, then a marketing executive at So So Def Records, stumbled across one of his videos and was immediately struck by his musical talent. He reached out to Justin and his mother and brought Justin to LA to meet Usher, who got him a record deal with Island Records. And the rest is history. He became one of the biggest teen pop sensations of all time and inspired a fanatical following of believers to buy his CDs, concert tickets, and merchandise. Labels and producers quickly realized that social media like YouTube could be an untapped goldmine for new musical talent. Similarly, aspiring musicians realized that if their videos were seen by the right person, they could have a chance at becoming the next Justin Bieber. This sparked what I've been referring to as the Justin Bieber phenomenon. After the success of Justin Bieber in the early 2010s, there was an influx of suspiciously similar teen singers who had also been discovered on YouTube. Today I'd like to take a look at a few of the most notable Justin Bieber clones and how their careers progressed. This will by no means be an exhaustive list of every singer who started on YouTube, otherwise this video would be hours long. I'll mostly be focusing on the ones who came up in the 2010 to 2012 time period who I am most familiar with. Cody Simpson. Did I make this entire video just as an excuse to talk about Cody Simpson? Maybe. Cody was my Justin Bieber. As I mentioned in my Flipnote video, I was a bit of a Justin Bieber hater in the early 2010s, but for some reason I was a Cody Simpson stan, despite him basically just being Justin Bieber but blonde and Australian. He even followed me on Twitter at one point, no biggie. The story of his early career is extremely similar to that of Justin Bieber. In 2009, he began uploading covers to YouTube of songs like Jason Mraz's I'm Yours, Justin Timberlake's Cry Me a River, and the Jackson 5's Want You Back. Sean Campbell, a producer with Atlantic Records, discovered his videos in 2010 and secured him a record deal. Cody and his family relocated from Australia to LA and he released two singles, I, I, I and Summertime, both certified bops to this day. He started pushing Cody hard. He embarked on a tour that summer, his music videos were played on the Disney Channel, his merch was sold in Claire's, he started appearing all over teen magazines like Tiger Beat and J14. It was clear they thought they had the next Justin Bieber on their hands. In December of 2010, he released an EP titled For You. The following year, he released a second EP, Coast to Coast, and actually hired the guy who discovered Justin Bieber, Scooter Braun, as his manager. His debut album, Paradise, was released in 2012, and shortly thereafter, he embarked on a headlighting tour to promote the album, which I, of course, attended wearing a homemade t-shirt with his face on it. He released his second album, Surfer's Paradise, in 2013, but after that he went on a bit of a hiatus. He ended up parting ways with Atlantic Records in 2014, citing creative differences. His career never really ended up blowing up the same way that Justin Bieber's did, and you definitely don't hear about him now as much as you did in the early 2010s. So what has he been up to lately? He has continued to release music as an independent artist, with his most recent album being released just last year. His musical style has shifted from typical teeny bopper dance pop to more of a rock, blues, and surf rock inspired sound. In 2019, he sort of returned to the public consciousness when he briefly dated Miley Cyrus. That era was a bit of a fever dream. Before he left Australia to pursue music, Cody had actually been a competitive swimmer. He decided to return to the sport in 2019 and now swims professionally in his home country. 
He even attempted to qualify for the 2021 Summer Olympics and was unfortunately unsuccessful, but maybe we'll see him in the next Summer Olympics. In the 2010s, he seemed poised to become as popular as Justin Bieber, but his career never really took off in the same way. I think he could have if he wanted to, but it seems he wanted to pursue his own interests instead, and honestly, good for him. Although I grew out of my Cody Simpson fangirl phase a long time ago, I think he'll always have a place in my heart. Austin Mahone was another artist I was briefly enamored with in the early 2010s, although not quite with the same intensity as Cody Simpson. He was inspired by Justin Bieber to start posting covers of songs on YouTube in 2010. He even covered one of Cody Simpson's songs, On My Mind. He quickly gained a following and released a few songs independently in 2012. In November of that year, he was signed to Republic Records. Over the next few years, he opened for Taylor Swift on her Red Tour, and went on a couple of his own headlining tours. He randomly became really popular in Japan and released some exclusive music there. He has only released one album to date, Dirty Work, in 2017. Nowadays, it doesn't seem that he's associated with his label anymore, but he continues to release music independently. He also, uh, opened an OnlyFans in 2020. Now, I was gonna just end it there and be like, Austin Mahone seems like a relatively low-key guy. Until I went back to his Wikipedia page to double-check something and found a new section that hadn't been there previously. It turns out that he's recently been charged by the SEC, along with several other celebrities, including Lindsay Lohan and Soulja Boy, for promoting certain crypto companies on Twitter without disclosing that he was paid to do so, which is illegal. So that's a bit of a yikes. Moving on. Grayson Chance posted a video of himself playing the piano and singing Lady Gaga's Paparazzi at a school music festival to YouTube in 2010, and it ended up going viral. The video caught the attention of Ellen DeGeneres, who invited him to appear on her show. She revealed that she had created a label in order to sign him, and shortly after, he released his first single, Waiting Outside the Lines. The following year, he toured with Cody Simpson and released his second single, Unfriend You, a very 2011 name for a song. In August of that year, he released his debut album, Hold On Till the Night, and it had bangers. Over the next few years, he continued to tour and release singles, and in 2016, he released an EP titled Somewhere Over My Head. Grayson sort of disappeared for a while before resurfacing in 2017 to announce that he is actually an LGBT icon. He came out as gay in an Instagram post. I mean, he literally got popular from covering a Lady Gaga song, so I don't think anyone was that surprised. Grayson is one of the few artists on this list who I've actually kept up with over the years, so I remember seeing this post shortly after he made it and feeling happy that he now feels comfortable enough to be his authentic self. He has been open about struggling during the earlier years of his career, including suffering from an eating disorder. He also spoke out against Ellen, his early champion, in 2022 for being manipulative and essentially abandoning him once the initial hype around him had died down. Given the recent backlash against Ellen, I can't say I'm too surprised. He is no longer associated with her label, but has continued to release music. He released his second album in 2019, an EP in 2021, and his third album just last year. And he hasn't been involved in any legal controversies as far as I'm aware. Ryan Beatty began posting covers to YouTube in 2011 and they quickly gained popularity, particularly his cover of Bruno Mars' song, Marry You, which got over 6 million views. He released his debut single, Every Little Thing, in November of that year. The accompanying music video was premiered by American Top 40 host Ryan Seacrest. His debut EP, Because of You, released the following year and premiered on Radio Disney. I saw him in concert in 2013 when he opened for Cody Simpson on his Paradise Tour. In 2014, he fired his management team and tried to part ways with his label similar to what Cody Simpson had done, but it resulted in a legal battle that left him unable to release music for a couple of years. Once he returned from his hiatus, he too came out as gay in 2016. He became a frequent collaborator of hip-hop boy group Rockhampton starting in 2017, and in addition to working with them, released his first album in 2018. He toured in 2019 and released his second album in 2020. He has also spoken about the struggles he faced in his early career, saying he felt creatively and emotionally constrained by his image as a supposedly straight teen heartthrob and the lack of control he had over his music. 
it's nice to see that he's able to have more freedom now over both his work and his image. Most of the Justin Bieber clones of the early 2010s were boys, presumably because label executives thought the lucrative teen girl market would be more interested in a male pop star. There were a few girlies who got famous from doing YouTube during this time, though. One of the most notable ones is Madison Beer, who was actually discovered by Justin Bieber himself. She began uploading covers to YouTube in 2012 and blew up when Justin Bieber tweeted about her cover of Etta James's At Last. She was then signed to his label, Island Records, and managed by Scooter Braun. The pipeline has now become a self-perpetuating cycle, apparently. In 2013, she recorded the theme song for the Monster High doll line, collaborated on a song with Cody Simpson, and released her debut single, Melodies. Her debut album was announced around this time as well, but never materialized. She released a second single in 2014, then collaborated with various other artists throughout 2015, and then, like most of the other artists we've covered, kind of disappeared for a bit. Again, like most of the other artists I've talked about, it seems like she broke away from her label and released an EP, As She Pleases, in 2018. She is well known now for being part of KDA, the virtual pop group based on the game League of Legends, along with Mion and Soyeon, members of K-pop girl group G Idol, and American singer Jaira Burns. Their singles, pop stars, and more became extremely popular, with the music videos amassing hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. Don't underestimate the power of League players, those motherfuckers scare me. Madison released her debut album, Life Support, in 2021, and one of the singles, Selfish, went viral on TikTok. She co-wrote and co-produced most of the songs on the album. She went on tour to promote the album in 2021 and 2022, and has another album coming out this year. It turns out she is also an LGBT icon, as she revealed that she's bisexual during a TikTok Live in 2020. She too has been open about struggling with her mental health, in part due to her sudden fame on social media, but at least career-wise, it seems like she's thriving now. Good for her. As I said earlier, this is nowhere near every singer who has ever gotten famous from posting on YouTube, but they were some of the first ones who sprung up in the immediate aftermath of the Bieber Fever era. Now when I set out to make this video, I intended it just to be a lighthearted and nostalgic look into a pop culture phenomenon that I found interesting, so I didn't really think it was going to be that deep. But as I started to research these artists, and particularly what they've been up to in recent years, I noticed several commonalities in their stories. First of all, despite the obvious efforts of record labels to discover the next Justin Bieber, none of these artists' careers really blew up in the same way that his did. In fact, it seems that most of them took a break sometime in the mid-2010s, and when they returned, it was with a different sound, style, and record label. What I am inferring from this, or what some of the artists have even outright stated, is that they felt overwhelmed and constrained by trying to fit into the very particular teen pop star mold. It's clear they were all very passionate about making music, and all they really wanted was to be able to have full creative control over their work. In a 2018 interview, Ryan Beatty stated, I was just rolling with the punches and dealing with what I was given. Being young, I was just really underestimated, and I remember never really being taken seriously. I get it, I was 16, 17 in these sessions, but at the same time, I did feel like I had a sense of what I wanted to do or whatever. Back then, I didn't feel like I could be myself in any way, and the times that I did and tried to have my own identity, I never felt that it was taken seriously. Can you imagine my entire late teenage years, I was being perceived as somebody that I just absolutely wasn't, and that's something I can never take back. I don't want this to sound like I regret anything, but it's really difficult. And that's another thing. These artists were incredibly young when they were discovered, in some cases only 12 or 13 years old. Which makes me kind of wonder about the ethics of plucking a regular child off the internet and thrusting them into the spotlight. In a lot of cases, it seems like the adults around these kids failed them. This is something that even Justin Bieber himself has spoken about in his recent YouTube documentary. Raisin Chance spoke about feeling abandoned by Ellen. You may have noticed that several of the artists I talked about were at one point associated with Scooter Braun, a somewhat controversial figure who has been called out by people like Taylor Swift for being manipulative and a bully. I think it's highly likely that these producers, managers, and label execs were far more interested in profits than the desires and well-being of the kids they were now responsible for. At the time, I was kind of jealous of these kids my age who got to be famous, but looking back, I know I would have been absolutely miserable in their position. 
It's obvious that they've all struggled in various ways, and no kid should ever have to go through that. Wish has come to make a special guest appearance. Wish, do you have anything to say to the viewers at home? I don't know if the microphone picked up any of that sniffing, but I hope it did. For better or worse, the YouTube to teen pop star pipeline doesn't seem to be as prevalent now as it once was. If anything, I feel like we're seeing the opposite pipeline. YouTubers gain notoriety for their non-music related online content first, and then try to start a music career. Some examples that come to mind are Joji, Corpse, and Gabby Hanna. Nowadays, you can become a celebrity through YouTube alone. You don't need to wait for some weirdo from the entertainment industry to come along and pluck you from the masses. That being said, the rise of internet celebrities does have its own set of issues, but that's a topic for another day. Thank you so much for watching and reminiscing on this era of 2010's internet culture with me. If you enjoyed this video, liking and subscribing would be very much appreciated. I'll catch y'all in the next one.